What's up? It's Tommy Green. You're listening to the Rev Talks podcast brought to you by the Rev Gatherings, digital tribe of up-and-comers, emerging leaders, <laughs> doing our best to keep in step as the face of the church changes in our generation. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome home. If you are a returning visitor, hiya. Feel free to subscribe, share it around, give us a five-star review. Tell somebody. If you like what you hear, please let us know. You can reach out to us at therevgatherings.com. Feel free to email us at therevgatherings at gmail.com. Hope you enjoy the episode. See you on the other side. Okay, we are recording. Welcome to the Rev Talks podcast. Everybody, I um, am very happy to introduce you to an amazing couple of friends um, that Chrissy Green and I have made um, and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. So welcome, Bobby, Ashley Mackey to the Rev Talks podcast. And thank, thank you. you very, very much thank for making time. Appreciate yeah. it. Well, we, um, I'm trying to think, ordinarily what would be happening in, in a non-COVID world is that we would be hanging out together this weekend with the rest of like the Rev crew. It all got... You know, we kicked the can down the road to October, um, but I have no idea, like, what that digital, like, in-person hangout format's going to be, but mm-hmm. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I get to see you. I'm bummed we're not hanging out this weekend, for sure, but... Same. <sighs> okay, so... <laughs> so dumb, I know. Um, so take a second, if you can, and just sort of, uh, how did we, how did we actually meet and if you guys can tell a little bit the story of kind of the genesis of, of just our relationship and your connection to Rev and um, kind of how that all came together. Oh, sure. Heck yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think it kind of, that one kind of happened on, on my end, I suppose. Uh, we were at a Sleeping Giant show here in Phoenix. Um, and it was kind of like a, it was kind of a trip, honestly. Uh, I ended up meeting Kevin and um, Byron in, the, in like just at the show because yeah, we stepped down. outside to get some air and just kind of started talking to these guys out there mm-hmm. just talking life and you know yeah a bunch of, just whatever shooting the breeze I guess they came up and said what's up and uh, found out that they were from Salt Lake and we were just kind of hanging out and then I don't know. Like you just like came around yeah. the corner and you were like so surprised to see them because they had driven all the way from Salt Lake. We were in yeah. Phoenix. Yeah. And you were like super stoked because you guys had just finished your set and you were like, hey, this guy really wants me to like go pray for him. Like, will you guys come and come with me and just pray with me yeah. for him? Mm-hmm. And I think you went and our friends went. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember how that all went down, but then you kind of hung out and you were talking and to be honest, like we were kind of standing there like, oh my God, like our hero, like in the face, <laughs> like talking to us right now. We're not right? expecting this. Like we didn't know what to say. Right. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. We just kind of started sharing and you were like, you need to come to Rev, Rev, Rev Gathering. Like you guys seem like good people. And yeah. we we're like, okay, Tommy Green, we'll come to your church and go to this, <laughs> whatever this is that like, you know, it, it was the Rev Gathering. I think that you didn't even know how to describe it. <laughs> you were just like, still just don't. Go. Still <laughs> don't. It's like a thing, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So we're like, That's okay, funny. we will. And right. so we did. I think it was the second gathering for you guys. So mm-hmm. um, then we just kind of like fell in love. I remember it was probably one of the last sessions. And I was just like, I don't know why, but I just feel like we're supposed to stay connected. Like we're supposed to be here. Well, we'd met a lot of good people and stayed connected with them. And mm-hmm. it just kind of went from you, there. And you just jumped like four months. What? You just jumped like four months. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, well, <laughs> no, yeah. Cause like meeting you that night at the show and just kind of taking like a leap of faith uh, yeah. to come out there on a whim on like a, I don't even know what this is going to be like. He like, invited us out while he was on tour is he even gonna remember us like when we get there or <laughs> like so awesome yeah so awesome and, uh so yeah that that first weekend at rev gathering was instrumental in in our lives for sure so and uh yeah because at the time we were kind of like deconstructing a lot of um 
old ways that we mm-hmm. viewed ministry and viewed church and viewed community. And it just like came at the right time. Like it was like a moment where we were like, we need to do something different, but I don't know what the heck that looks like. And mm-hmm. so when we walked into the first Rev gathering, it was like, this is it. This is what it's supposed to look like. Mm-hmm. This is where God wants us to be. Um, it was just all so right, but it was all just like, okay, God, we feel like we're supposed to go. We brought our friends, Mm -hmm. you know, and it just, yeah, it just went from there, you know, really did. Yeah. That's wild. Okay. How many years ago was that now? Oh man. Four. I don't know. It was more than that. Cause it was the second rev gathering. So I don't know. Was that 2016 or 2015? Was it 15? Why did Ben? Might have I, been. I feel like I this. Go, I'm trying to think of what tour cycle it was. I remember the venue. Oh, it was the Emory tour. Yeah, with Emory. Yeah, because we were standing outside. I remember that. So. Yeah, I'm just. I can't remember what year that was. It was one of them. One of them. That's cool. So, um, man, that's wild. Okay, so then. So that's how we got connected to you uh, and, and Rev. It was and, 2015. Oh, 2015. 2015 holy smokes I, I don't i don't use social media so it's like <laughs> one scroll down so like the first time we went and just like one swipe and i was like oh there it is like, there's five years that's the kind of participation i'm looking for in these kind of formats you know what i'm saying it's like show up every once a year it doesn't matter like it's not yeah. oh um, no just my instagram uh presence is so lack <laughs> no, yeah one swipe you get one swipe a couple my, years down yeah <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh, well, there's some humans that I know. Like one swipe, we'll get them maybe to breakfast today, right? And like, not the same. Dude. Um, yeah, that's funny. Okay, so then, in general, what do you think about like, and and this is just a side thing, right? Like, I don't, I don't exactly know, but I feel like part of what's happening in general is a lot of people are in, they're in a similar space. Like, re, they are themselves being their relationship is being redefined to whatever their call is kind of like, there's this, there's a love language between us and God personally. And then a lot of times there's a, there's an offering of service or worship or something that comes out of that relationship and it looked one way and then it changes and it morphs. And so five years ago, what did it kind of look like for you guys then? And what do you guys sense that your expression of service or worship or pr- not your personal intimate thing, but like your expression of faith, what does that look like now versus what it was a handful of years ago? Even if it's like, I don't know, cause that's a very good answer for a lot of people too. So, but has it changed or how has it changed for you guys? Um, my expression of faith has changed. Definitely. I think, um, a lot. I, uh, I think back then, you know, five years ago, I, my expression of faith was through music, Mm. um, which was very new to me. And that was already like a big change because, uh, the deconstructing was this feeling of my expression of faith was through like, how would I say, like a getting like maybe a title, you know, or feeling like I needed to have like a specific role, that was my expression of faith, as opposed to using my a creative gift. Wow. Um, and so, it's even changed again. Where I'm, I'm maybe not in music, but I'm still in a an expression of faith through creating the content, you know, online now, you know, <laughs> um, and and that's kind of one of my expressions of of faith. What is, what is it now? Like, cause it's interesting. It's like a blend of the two, right? Like, it's like, Oh, it's like sort of a role heavy. And then it's like, no, it's like expression heavy. And now you've kind of found a new lane for it. What are you doing now? And what is that expression body? Um, yeah. So what I do now uh, is I'm like a online content creator, uh, which yes. is a fancy way of saying, I like to play video games in front of a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Heck Yeah. Well, wait, talk, uh, talk about it. Talk about it a little bit. That's really cool. It's awesome. Yes. Uh, sure. So um, I use Twitch uh, as a platform for uh, creating content and creating a community. 
uh, mm -hmm. of people. Right now, we we focus. You know, we we play D and D. You know, yeah. once a week and have a good time. And then uh, the other half the week, we get to be pirates and uh, steal treasure. You know, <laughs> yes, dude. But, but we're having fun and creating uh, a community of people and um and just friendship i think right now is our our biggest thing you know is creating yeah. a safe place for people to come and get connected yeah where do you feel where do you feel like the fingerprint kind of of um your love language your your heart towards god like where do you actually feel or give me an example of a time when late, lately when you've been like that was so like a god moment for me um in that same in that facet yeah like uh i think it so recently uh one of my dear friends is a twitch streamer and uh he kind of came out um like as bisexual yeah and um and i just ex like i was just really proud of him to even yeah. just share that and I just got to extend uh, love to them, yeah. And uh, on on social media, and I got like a private message that was like, "Hey, thank you so much." Like I was more scared of sharing that with my, you know, Christian friends and how I would be received and loved. Wow, and that really meant a ton. It means a ton to me for you to publicly love on me as a person in doing some you know sharing this information wow that's awesome okay that's super good when was that um was like last week ago, yeah. yeah wow yeah that's so cool that's so cool i think I, i'm i'm like dad era that's how i feel i feel like the old dad guy when it comes to stuff and, and i said it a while ago just like i i am not used to how real the internet is mm -hmm. right like i'm not used to that i'm used to thinking of like well the internet's not real like real life is happening over there but then i had a friend of mine jam me up on it pretty good and he's like the internet and the connection and the stuff that gets shared on the internet is as real as you need it to be mm -hmm. and it yeah. can't be full of depth and stuff and just thinking of how our life even chrissy and me our life with some of the human trafficking stuff that happened because of the internet. And so it's a weird disconnect to be like, well, yeah. does real life really happen? And it's like, no, no, no. Like, so to have an exchange like that where someone needed a sense of identity and dignity and care and just to be seen and loved for who they are mm -hmm. and not to feel the shame and the fear and to be rejected. Like, and that happened through a conversation on Twitch um, I think it was tech, you know, formally like a, it was a combination between Twitch, Twitter, and it was, it was yeah. social media. It was social online. Media. Sure. Yeah. And, um, wow. and so that's just through hopefully me being sincere and genuine on Twitch or on in those communities and, yeah. um, being myself, you know? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Cause that, that's really our heart as a yeah. couple and was our struggle like years ago, like we grew up in ministry and then we graduated and we did what every like young Christian newly graduated from high school did. We did an internship and like went to Bible uh, mm -hmm. school, I guess you could say, and like just started taking on roles in ministry and we had no time for community. And wow. um, mm -hmm. we had like a very like specific way of thinking um, and felt like it kind of hindered us from being our truest self. Like we always mm -hmm. just felt like what we were doing wasn't, I don't want to say enough, but right. maybe like, it just wasn't what we knew we were supposed to be doing. And that was to just wow. be a safe place for people mm -hmm. and, um, you know, judgment free mm -hmm. being there just to love. Like that's, that's like all we ever want to do is love. Like we don't want to, um, it's not our job to change people. It's our job to love them, you know, mm -hmm. and to live our life out loud for them. And, um, you know, so it's moments like that when he's got a friend saying, thank you so much for out loud in front of people saying that you love me and that yeah. you're out of, you know, because then it sparks other conversations in the future to yeah. move forward. And I've had those experiences too, with other people in my life. And, 
yeah, so that's really like, I think like to answer your question from like my perspective is that at least, you know, five years ago, um, realizing how important that community is, realizing mm -hmm. how important it is to be your authentic self, because I never felt like we, we were our authentic self, you know, um, mm -hmm. until just five years ago, you know, where we yeah. could really just be our messy, authentic self and um, use social media as a tool, use our home as a tool to have people come in and just love on them. Wow. And um, yeah, so I think, I think that's, it's so good, you guys. That's I think my part on that. Yeah. Well, no, it's interesting, and I would say this. I think there's a lot of people that here's the here's my my precursor to all of these kinds of conversations, right? People need to understand that there's a spectrum of belief and orthodoxy and rules and not rules and freedom and fears and whatever. And it, it's unfortunate when there's individuals that are going to meet all sorts of different people and they've got their own convictions and their own light before the Lord. They're going to walk in their own light, the light that they feel strongly about. And that's fine. I think it's unfortunate for anybody. If one of the things that I felt like I was picking up from you was like, it's weird to get to a spot where you're like, I'm in ministry devoted to people, but I don't have people. And I don't know if people have me mm. and that's weird. And then it's also weird if you're like, I'm in church in the love universe. And I feel like I love people that ministry won't let me love. Well, mm -hmm. dang, that's a hard yeah. one. And I think there's a lot of people that if they're led by not just like this, like kind of mushy, whatever, but like you said, love out loud, like there's a bravery and a courage and a fear. And a there's a lot about trying to love people. Well, mm -hmm. it's complicated. And sometimes we do really good. Sometimes we just fall on our face. So I think that's really cool for you guys to feel like we're just discovering what our language really is. And if it's yeah. connected to what it was, it, some part of us isn't there. We're not there. So, yeah, like I know for me, um, when I started to kind of like, just kind of zoom in on all these little moments in me serving in ministry. And when I say we're serving in ministry, like we were on staff, like we were like 100%. When we mm -hmm. weren't at our full-time job, we were at the church working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I zoom in on these like little moments where slowly I was like becoming less and less of who I was. Little moments like dress code in order to serve in certain capacities. It's so small, you know, in some ways a dress code is a form of honor, but at the same time, I felt like I was changing myself in all these little mm -hmm. ways just to, like Bobby said, like keep these titles to like keep up appearances, keep up whatever, mm -hmm. when I'm like, you know, I think we're gonna talk about it uh, later on about like our adoption story with our daughter, but like I was dying inside because I couldn't be my authentic self. I was so, afraid to share that I was depressed. I was so afraid to share that I was mad. Other people were getting what I wanted more than anything in the world. I didn't feel like I could share that yeah. because then it would come across that, oh, well, you, you don't have faith that you're going to get pregnant or whatever. It just kind of domino effect in all these other areas mm -hmm. because I was so afraid to just be myself. I was so afraid to be messy. Mm -hmm. It's just all these little things. The list could go on, but, sure. uh, you know, for me, when I, uh, you know, especially when I walked into Rev like that first night and when we came home and just started making these little changes, I was just like, wow, God still loves me. <laughs> you know, oh, like, right. like I just felt oh. so much freedom. Like mm. I'm being me right now. And you still like, wow. I just like, it chokes me up when I think about it just because wow. I really wasn't my authentic self for so long, right. you know, mm. and it's just, mm. God's so good. It's mm. the feeling of having foregone who I felt I was or what my expression wanted to be because it was in pursuit of a title because that's was, what wow. felt like the thing that I needed to do to express my faith. Was that Now, let me ask you this, because again, we were learning, right? Like we learn. I would like to do this because I do want, I want to talk most, that was mostly what I wanted to share. I wanted to hear from you guys. I wanted you guys to be able to share sort of your family journey and, and your life together. And then the addition of your beautiful daughter and all this stuff that's going on. So before we do that, I just want to throw this out because was it 
asked of you to not be your authentic self? Or was that pressure you guys put on yourselves? Or was it a mix, right? Like I, I just, mm-hmm. some people are going to take on stuff that isn't mm-hmm. there. Other times it really is like, no, we have this standard and this thing. And so then you do feel like I'm at work, right? And that's not me. So what, talk about that because there are people that are going to end up serving in ministry at places where maybe they don't let their freak flag fly, but like mm-hmm. they're cool, they're good, they get what it's about. Other people, especially creatives like you, Ashley, who are like, when you love fashion and you love style, you're like, I can't even, I don't even look like myself. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. like a big deal. Like there's a lot of people where their expression is important. And so, yeah. you know, if I can't, if I can't pick out, buy my outfit, customize it for me and then not even rock it when I want to like worship, like that starts feeling like a violation, but maybe they didn't know. So can you talk a little bit about that gray area? Like, what did you guys bring with you? And then what was actually put on you? So I would say it is a little bit of both. Hmm. Um, I, I just kind of want to like preface this by saying like the church that uh, we, we still are a part of right now, um, sure. right, right now, uh, we really did in a sense grow up, like our faith grew up in this church. I, I'm 31 right now and I've been going there since I was 14. Wow. So a lot of my pastors and my mentors spiritually raised me. And so as I was growing up uh, and I was changing and becoming who God created me to be, um, I don't want to say they asked me not to be myself, but I think I was afraid because I knew how they were. I knew what their expectations were. So I kind of put those expectations on myself. Um, You know, there were a few things that were asked of us, uh, you know, to not be public about that I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with. And that's why I say it was 50, 50, because I should have, I think that I, there's some responsibility on me there where I should have been like, Hey, that seems kind of weird. If you're, um, like, let me just give an example, like drinking, you know, okay, you're from the pastoral staff, go ahead and have a beer, but just don't uh, do it in public or like on social media. And I'm thinking that just seems more sneaky to me. That just seems more fishy, like from somebody else, like who's looking in from the inside, it just kind of looks, it looks sneaky to me. And I should have, I should, I, for me, when I look back, I had an opportunity where I could have said something. Mm-hmm. Um, and instead just kind of living in that fear of like, oh my God, you know, is somebody going to see something or, mm-hmm. you know, um, as simple as like tattoos or piercings, like oh, that wasn't yeah. anything that we really tapped into. We wanted in our early twenties, but we were so afraid, you know, just like little silly things like that, that, um, you know, that seem like such a small thing right now, but at the time, you know, you're being in a sense raised by these people and, um, you kind of have an idea of what their reaction is going to be and the kind of culture of the church that you're at. We went, I would say our church was a little more traditional, mm-hmm. you know, very like suburban white families, you know, like nothing really crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say like our group of friends is probably the more eclectic group. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, I just, I, I, that's all that to say, like, I think it was a little 50, 50. I think that there was a few things that was asked of us that just, I didn't feel right about. Um, and I should have said something or I should have, you know, asked more questions. I was just so afraid. Wow. I, I, I do struggle with people pleasing, you know? And so that, Oh, okay. okay. What's yeah. the, what's the fear if you can't, cause I just think mm-hmm. when we let people into like, yeah. uh, I felt like I betrayed myself a little bit. I think all of us are guilty of, I don't know how to negotiate this. I, I'm not sure. Cause it's also like connected to my ability to worship. And it's also connected to like my, mm-hmm. my function in my community. And like, am I allowed to change here? Am I allowed to challenge my, allowed- so what yeah. was your fear? when you say that I was scared and you connected it to like wanting to please people, but Mm -hmm. what was the fear? Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want to disappoint my leaders. I didn't want to disappoint my spiritual parents. I didn't want to disappoint Mm. my mentors. And there was a level of expectation on people who were doing things. For example, I'm a worship leader and in order for me to be released as a worship leader, I had to meet these expectations. 
Oh. And I knew in some areas I was either missing it or didn't agree with, excuse me. And, uh, you know, I suppressed a lot of who I was just so that I could be released to do something that I love to do that I know God's calling me to do, but did it the wrong way. Like it didn't, it, mm-hmm. it shouldn't have to have been like that, you know? Oh, Cause you're saying I played the game, but I really didn't mm-hmm. want to. Right. At the time I didn't know I was playing the game. I, oh, oh I really, okay. 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 I, yeah, I, yeah, I think so I was just, I thought I was doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. I thought I was okay. Well, this is not bad. See, I'm, I'm trying to explain it. Well, I know, and you're not trying to crap yeah. all over your church, and like I, I, I totally get. It. I'm just, yeah. I think there's a part where there's a lot of young kids, and there's a lot of leaders that are our age and our generation that are they're putting all of their agreements back on the table and going like, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it like this, or yeah. that wasn't okay with me, and like whatever. But in the process, if the if the majority of the culture feels like in order to be Christian over here, mm-hmm. you have to do it this way a lot of people are going to bounce. And I think just giving permission for the process and giving permission for begin again, a new way or find a nif- find a new space. Right. That's all possible too. I just don't want people to feel so trapped that in order to get away from that, they get away from him. And I right. think that's like, that's the dichotomy that I think a lot of people live in. Like if I want to be part of your church, I have to deny what I believe. And I, I don't think that's what Jesus would say. Right. But I just don't know if people see another way. And so I really appreciate the like, ah, it was, it's not, it's not evil. It just, right. it's their way. And it didn't actually line up when I realized it. I was lying to myself or I was being a little dishonest because I didn't agree with that, but I, mm-hmm. I wanted to worship. And ah, I think a lot of people yeah. go through that and that could be a job. That could be a lifestyle. that could be family culture. That can be all sorts of stuff. So mm-hmm. it's part of growing is realizing what you're about. It, yeah. It's no judgment or con- condemnation on anyone. I'm just, I'm appreciating yeah. The like, yeah, that's where I was. I was sort of like saying yes to stuff that I was just kind of meh on. Because it, I think it was because we also wanted to have the opportunity to be used by God. And yeah, we wanted to do expression. the thing we know we're called to do. Wow. You know? So it's like that, that-, that place of personal call. That That's what me and Johnny G were talking about a couple weeks ago. Is he was like, you know, the worship department at expression and, and his thing, that was a huge deal to like kind of step back from that. Yeah. Wrecked him for like months. Yeah. Such an important thing. If you're a praiser mm-hmm. and all of a sudden that gets kind of shut down in some ways. Oh my gosh. It's like you are the instrument and you're out of tune. That's like a hard thing. So I, I guess I just think like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. That oh yeah. When I, when we stepped down, we stepped down from everything, all of the ministries we were overseeing mm-hmm. And worship was a huge part. I was like the worship assistant, uh, the worship pastor's assistant. And I oversaw the youth worship leading like every Sunday morning. And when we let go of all of that, I literally didn't know who I was because that's all I did. I was, I had suppressed so much of who I was that when all of this doing went away, I didn't even know what to do with myself. I had to like rediscover who I was in Christ you know, as cheesy as that sounds, you know, no, man, it's, not, I, it's not corny. We do it all the time. We do yeah. it all the time. We, we really, as a culture, we are used to being defined and we ascribe our value by what we do, how we perform, mm-hmm. you know, how hard I work, how much I make, you know, what I draw. Like we just do that yeah. to ourselves. How good mm-hmm. you look, you know, your style, Gosh, the yeah. friends you have. It's yeah. I mean, like we didn't, what we knew we wanted to value community we wanted to value authenticity but we didn't Mm -hmm. know how we'd suppressed it we'd become these little christian robots you know thinking that cool we led worship or cool we taught this class or whatever it is we did something but it wasn't fulfilling we weren't being Mm -mm. who christ created us to be you know wow that's okay so i just think there's a lot of richness in that and i'd love for people that are in the process to know that there's a lot of people like us that we've served the greater body of Christ out of devotion, out of commitment, out of conviction from a good place. And in working within the system in place, some of us have violated stuff in our conscience. We've just like eh, gotten grossed out by certain parts of it. And we step back. That mm-hmm. happens a lot. It will probably happen multiple times. You're not crazy. If that happens to you, 
It's yeah. good to take inventory of what did I bring to this that was off and what did they do maybe that's really not cool with me. Mm-hmm. And it's probably a mix of the two. No one has to be the hero or the villain. There's probably a partnership in there. Um, that's cool. You know, I just want people to know it's like, that's, I don't know. I think that's like a part of people's journeys when they get into ministry is like, what do I want to do? What do I not want to do? And Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay. Well pivot with me then. And let's talk a little bit about your guys' family story and, and however that shapes up for you guys, I'd love whatever you guys want to speak to in that. Cause I think this is really, really beautiful. Cool. Well, um, where do we start with that? (laughs) Well, I guess, well, Bobby and I were high school sweethearts. We met yeah. when we were ju- juniors in high school. Yep. And uh, what's funny is that we went to the same high school. We didn't even meet or know each other until our junior year, which I think is kind of funny. Yeah. We had mutual friends. And um, yeah, so we started dating. And then uh, mm-hmm. I invited him to church. That's how we started dating. Right. Is I was in a Christmas production and mm-hmm. he came because he thought I was cute. And it just went off from there. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so yeah, we graduated high school together. We went through our internship together. And then uh, in 2009, we got engaged mm-hmm. and got married pretty quick. So we were 21, right? Mm-hmm. Um, June 2010. Yep. Just celebrated 10 years. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. It's 10 crazy, years. Crazy 10 years. So. Wow. Um, yeah, so going into getting married, and then I'll let you kind of take over this part after, but um, sure. going into getting married, one of the things that I knew and that we knew as a couple is that we would most likely struggle to conceive because mm. um, I'll let Bobby share on this part. He sure. was actually diagnosed with childhood cancer when you were 12, 11 or 12. Mm-hmm. Um, so you want to share like a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, sure. So like the quick story is um, I was diagnosed with like a stage four uh, abdominal tumor that had ruptured. Um, and and it was basically, at least the way I understand it, it was kind of like a make or break where uh, the medication that I needed to have good a good chance surviving um, was going to make it so that my body would not go through not be able, I'd be sterile. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's like, we well, save your life, but you're not going to be able to have kids probably. Yeah. 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 Freak. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that was like, uh, yeah, I was 11 or 12 when I went through that. That's a whole long story, uh, for another time. But, um, you know, I got tested when I was 18 and was sterile mm. and, um, and so then, you know, jumping forward, you know, another, three, four years into our marriage, um, kind of started to walk down that road of what it looks like actually, you know, because I kind of forgot about it. Like it was never even a big deal or I didn't even think about what that would feel like when I got into marriage, you know, of we're also growing up in church, you know, and you're thinking like, well, I have faith that's going to happen. A miracle is going to happen. That's kind of how we like I want to say suppressed that sure. like deep ache, like wanting mm. to be able to carry it. We would just kind of say, God's going to take care of it. We're going to have a miracle baby. No problem. We just thought like, it's not going to worry God's about gonna it. Take care of it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, right. And yeah, like getting into, like you said, a couple years into our marriage. Um, so 2013 is kind of when this next part happened. Sure. Um, well, we, we started, we wanted to have kids. Like we were ready to, we've been together for a while. And um, we started to just like talk to our closest friends and our mentors and just, you know, asking them to pray for us and pray with us. Um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we would go up, like when we'd have our worship nights at church and we'd go up for some intentional prayer and um, mm. just setting aside time to really just be with Jesus and pray about what this would look like about us having kids. I mean, of course, adoption was always on the table, but mm. you know, that's a whole other like financial thing that we had to think about. And we just didn't even know where to start. So in 2013, we started to pray about, okay, God, what is this going to look like? What do we need to look out for? What are you asking of us? What are we doing? You know? Yeah. And, um, 
that year ended up being like one of the worst years, but one of the best years of our lives because, um, you know, you, you, you go into 2013, we're starting to pray about having a kid, you know, six months or so into it. And you're, I'm not pregnant. And I'm reminded monthly that I am not pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. You get tired of it fast. You know, you just get tired Uh, of hoping that you're going to get pregnant. mm -hmm. You get tired of people coming up to you at church saying, God told me that you're pregnant. God told me that next month you're going to get pregnant. Um, You know, I was starting to become bitter. I think we were both starting to become bitter um, Mm -hmm. because we were so heavily involved in ministry. Pretty much our whole church knew that we had trouble to conceive. Mm -hmm. Oh, Um, wow just kind of happened that way, I guess. Yeah, sure, um, sure. And uh, so it just kind of felt like everybody knew, but it felt like we couldn't be really uh, raw in our hurt, you mm-hmm. know? Nobody yeah. wants to admit that they're angry at God because they're not pregnant or that something happened or that they're bitter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And you just feel like, well, I just got to keep hoping or got to... yeah. It's, it's like a mind, it's a serious mind battle. Like you just feel like mm-hmm. you, you have that lie in your head. Like, well, do I have enough faith? You know, which that has nothing to do with it. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it was such a hard time. And I felt like we felt like everybody around us was pregnant. Oh, you know, yes. I just felt like everybody at church gets pregnant at the same time. And I was just like, what the heck, man? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. and uh it was really hard. And I remember my best friend had gotten pregnant with her first and I was so happy, but I was so sad for us. I was Mm. so, I didn't know how to respond. I remember standing there because she had done such a beautiful, fun, unique announcement when all of us were together. And I just remember standing there and I didn't know what to feel. I just felt so sad. Mm. And I was like, okay, I, I need to lean into God. Like I've never leaned into because I know now that I am so bitter. I can't even be happy oh, right. for my best friend, you know, and she and I have talked about this and, um, you know, uh, but it was so tough. It was so tough to walk through that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, it was very like, I felt a lot of shame. Yeah. Like, Ooh. like I felt, res- I felt responsible you know, like I just, I blame myself for it, mm-hmm. even though now looking back, realizing that it was completely out of my control right. Yeah. and um, feeling like of my own, I wasn't doing enough or I wasn't, I had made too many mistakes for wow. it. Uh, oh, the lies are just coming. Oh yeah. Yeah. It Cause it's like, boom, 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 like boom. it's not as simple as, Hey, in order to stay alive, you had to give this sort of option. That's what you had to do. And you're like, no, now it's years later. And it's like, well, yeah, I probably made too much and God doesn't know. And it's like, I'm lost and I'm screwing up. And it's like, oh my God, no, stay. You had to stay alive, man. And like, that has nothing to do with your behavior or your character. Like that's about Mm -hmm. medically what they needed to do to salvage you so that you could have a life. But the lie is, you can somehow earn it. You earned it and you lost it. And you, it's on you. Like, yeah. Wow. That's well, then, down. Again, the pressure just gets turned up when, like mm-hmm. I said, we're just, you know, we're at the church doing different events, like weekly, multiple times a week. And people were constantly coming up to us, wanting to pray with us and, you know, good intentions in their heart, but not realizing how damaging they were. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, sorry, but I interrupted. What were you no, no, no. That's else? that was that was really kind of it for me. Like that whole year, just like watching her go through this hmm. and feeling this level of responsibility for it. Wow! Like, I uh, just really blaming myself because hmm. I couldn't show up in the way that I needed to or what wanted to, whatever. What would you guys say to one another in the, in the rough times? Mm. Cause that is, if that's not too much, like wh- how would you guys, how would you guys interact? Cause what if there's a couple or there's people that are in the same position, maybe it's not working 
and they, they don't know what to do. What did you guys do in those moments when it's not working? It's not happening. How would you guys support one another? And, and where was there, where did it get rough? Like, if you can, you know, for people that are, they're in that cycle right now of like, is it my faith? Do I do something else? Like, is this it? Oh my God. Like get just some pointers or maybe some questions to ask or some insight so that they can get out of a, a cycle if, if they're really in pain. I'd love for people that, to know what you guys did mm-hmm. to, to try to see it or, you know what I mean? Just anything you guys can offer about that. I think I would tell myself and I would tell other people that feel that are in the same boat. Um, to be honest about the thoughts and the feelings sooner. I yeah. wish I mm-hmm. wish that I admitted that I was feeling bitter towards God, that I was angry, that God wasn't, you know, performing this miracle that, you know, we've been praying oh. so hard for. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish that mm-hmm. we'd been, well, Bobby and I are pretty honest with each other. So that wasn't an issue. Um, but I don't think our friends really knew how badly we were hurting. I don't think they knew. It, it was the feelings that we felt towards the Lord, I think, were the hardest to admit. And I think I think I wish that we, yeah. I would have admitted them sooner. And I think I would have, I would encourage anyone who's feeling that way now that you would just, even if you're just by yourself. Um, I was, I'm going to share that moment in the, I had in the car. Oh. Um For me, I got that relief when I was driving home from work one day and I was really upset. Um, You know, sorry, this is TMI, but I'm just going to be real. But like I'd started my period that day and I was really upset and I was fed up. I was tired of believing in a miracle that at the time I just thought, okay, this is never going to happen. I was tired of, you know, telling people that it was going to happen, standing on a stage, telling people, I believe in God that this is going to happen and it wasn't happening. Um, Mm. I was tired. I was tired of it. I was so exhausted. I was so emotionally drained. Um, Mm. You know, I struggle with anxiety and my anxiety was triggered. You know, every time I went into church, I just was like on the defense. I didn't want anyone to bring it up. I couldn't look at another baby. Mm-hmm. I could barely wow. be happy for my friends. I was just so like yep. numb to yeah. the thought of becoming a mom. Mm-hmm. I just did not want to think about it. I was shutting it out. And so when that moment happened, I'm on my way home from work and I start like hysterically crying and I had to pull over um, and I just started laying into God. <laughs> I just started like telling him exactly how I felt, you Mm -hmm. know, no censored words. Like I was just like, I am pissed. (laughs) Like I'm so hurt. I am disappointed in you, God. I'm so angry. Why would, why would you lead me to Bobby? You know that I want to be a mom. Why would you lead me to someone that can't have a baby? You know, and that was something at the time I hadn't even admitted to Bobby where I was just like, if God knew that I wanted to be a mother, why would he put me through this and put me with a man that, you know, can't have kids? And it was just, it was a lot. It was a lot to admit. It was, no, 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 that's was, okay. I'm yeah. saying, hold on. There's so much riches. Yeah. Cause for even like we're saying me and Chris, like mm-hmm. we're on to, to be completely upfront. We, yeah. we are, we just went through last week, miscarriage number four. <sighs> so, those questions and the like, I don't know what to do with God. Yeah. Right. And the pressure of like, I'm not allowed to think bad about you. Like, so that moment of you even saying, I had to even go, I had to be able to say out loud, I love this dude. If you knew what was in my heart, why did you let me love this guy? Yeah. <laughs> you knew, but you know, yeah. this is real. I, I don't think people understand how totally normal. Mm-hmm. and and healthy grief with god is yeah we're not allowed to talk about it. so i'm like okay so yeah. you're saying to him even why did you give me this this human that i love why did you let that happen 
and it's not about Bob. It's like, but it's like, yo, what is going on? Why? Yeah. You knew, you knew why. Mm-hmm. So important. Mm-hmm. So important. So, okay. Sorry. So you're having your moment. I'm having this moment and I'm just crying. I'm, I'm laying it out. I'm telling God exactly how I feel. And that was when I felt my breakthrough. Like Whoa. I was my real authentic self. You know, I, I shared my feelings as simple as that sounds. And I just, I just told God exactly how I was feeling. And I felt a physical weight lifted off my shoulders. I had never Whoa. felt, okay. I never, I never, I tell people this all the time. I, I never felt the tangible, the tangible, tangible, like can feel it in the atmosphere, peace of God, mm-hmm. like I'd have in that moment. That was the first time I had ever physically felt the peace of God. And I could see clear again. Mm. I felt like I could breathe again. I felt like just this huge weight had been lifted off of me. And um, and I just kind of sat there and I was kind of regaining my composure and getting ready to drive off. And I just like remember taking a deep breath and I just heard God tell me, um, you're going to have a baby. You're going to be surprised, but you're going to be ready. And I just, I cried again, you know, oh. and I just took another deep breath and I just kept driving home. And then when Bobby got home, we, I told him what happened and, and we cried and we prayed and we're just like, okay. And that moment is what carried us all the way to the end of 2013 because we met our daughter Charlie on Christmas Eve in 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, it was that moment. (laughs) It wasn't, I'm not saying that this can't happen in a corporate church setting or in a group of people. Yeah. But it happened for me when I was just by myself alone, real and raw. And I went to my husband and we talked about it and we prayed and we mm-hmm. cried and we admitted more things to each other and just had this beautiful moment and mm-hmm. kind of just like moved on uh, in that season for us. Was that reconciled? And I'm asking for, even for Chrissy Green and me, as we're trying to talk this through, you know, like all this mm-hmm. stuff, because yeah. was that conversation and Bobby, just because there's a big part of this that I'd, I'd like to know just in that part, right? Like, was this, did you feel like, in the sharing of like, God, I felt the same thing about, or I've, I've been mad because, or you really hurt my feeling. Like, was that a, was it a reconciling, like almost like reconciliation of, of the time? Was it reconciliation between each other? Did you guys have, did you guys have beef with each other too? Cause there's also a sense of like almost forgiveness and like a, there's a mercy that comes in those moments. And I'd love to, Bobby, what did you experience in that conversation? Like, cause we're talking breakthrough, like you got breakthrough. Whoa. Okay. You were honest with God. God got a chance to step in. Whoa. What happened, Bobby? What was happening for you on the other side of that? Yeah. I think the, the way that I would kind of explain how that felt for me was this like coming to the table, uh, sharing how I felt and recognizing that each other were sitting on the other side of the table, blaming ourselves, not e- not the other person on the other side, but like I blame myself and she blamed herself. Um, and then we just kind of like met in the middle and it was like, oh you're not the reason that this isn't happening kind of to each other and just like whoa uh i I suppose like just like really like having that intimate moment of just telling each other that they're enough um Mm -hmm. and that they're not the reason that this hasn't happened yet um what did that what did that mean to you bobby uh, um for me it kind of just really let go of a lot of the weight of like of feeling like of doing uh like i feel and like i because i was living in i had made too many wrong decisions in my past um and that it just wasn't gonna happen 
and that I needed to do enough to make it happen. Like, uh, wow. you know, not necessarily that I was distorting scripture or misinterpreting it, but it was like, I just, I got stuck in like doing and, and believing that if I could do enough, it would happen. I don't know. I know I'm, that's kind of repetitive and I don't know how to like reiterate that in a different way. Well, I'm seriously failing you on your explanation. I'm going to judge you for it. And I'm <laughs> going to make sure everyone, what are you talking about? Okay. So for you really, it was like, I can, I'm sure this is like, if I take enough blame and I, hu- and I hustle hard enough, I'm sure I can turn the tide. And then Ashley's over there going like, if I just have enough faith in God, I'm just sure that I could turn the tide. And it's both, it's works based either way, right? Like it's, it's, right. it's not about surrender. It's not about yeah. possibility. It's not about another way. It's no, I, and I don't blame you guys. I'm saying how many other people have felt the same way? Like if I could just do whatever, it would work. It would work. I would whatever. And the real goal of, and maybe say this before you really talk about Christmas Eve meeting Charlie, what was the goal of being parents? Wow. Um. (laughs) He's hyperactive, but he (laughs) he does some stuff. Anyway, so for you though, Ashley, what was that? I want to be a mom. Well, why? Why? What does that mean to you? You know, I think I just always had it in my heart. I always saw myself as a mom. I always saw myself loving another human unconditionally. And um, wow, that's a good question, Tommy. Dang. (laughs) I've been looking forward to this conversation. And I'm, I'm, because Christy (laughs) Green has got that. Yeah. She's still got this mother hunger yeah. in her yeah. and and we keep we keep getting the crap beat out of us in this thing and we have yeah. three kid we've had three positive mm-hmm. pregnancy tests we've yeah. we've had three children right mm-hmm. and there's still this like yeah so talk about the desire of a woman that mm-hmm. wants to be a mom mm-hmm. what did that really mean because that's a beautiful thing and it's not a traditional story the way you saw it happening. Yeah. But talk about connecting those dots because that's still important. Yeah. You know, if I'm, you know, uh, being totally honest, like just because I have a daughter right now, doesn't mean that that desire has gone away. I definitely still want to carry my own child. And yeah, um, that is a very fine line to walk. Um it's tricky. You know, a lot of people want to say, oh, well, oh, but you have Charlie and she's so good and she's so sweet. And well, you got so lucky. And it's like, yeah, yes, you're right. I, I still want to get pregnant. I still want to hold, you know, another child, you know, just because you have a kid doesn't mean that that desire goes away. You wow. know, um, I, I don't know if I know why I just have it in me. I just want to experience it. Mm-hmm. I, have just always wanted to. And, um, I, I think I'm a natural caregiver. So I think that 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 might be part of it. Um, but you know, not getting pregnant is like a never ending. It's like, it's a grief journey. You're just like, I, every day, you know, I, when I, some days are good. Some days I'm totally fine. Some days I'm perfectly content that it's just the three of us. Mm. And then some days I just hope that one day I'll be like, oh, what? <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. pregnant. What? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, um, I that feeling has never gone away. Um, That's really cool oh, to know. That, that was such a good question. <laughs> I just I'm wondering and, because I think yeah. my, mom, my mom, my stepdad, you know, they adopted my sister Mercy when I was 14. Mm-hmm. She was a baby. My mom had me, and then I think she got, like, she had me in high school. Uh-huh. Then she got, like, cervical cancer or something. So then she couldn't have kids with my stepdad. And then they ended up adopting, right? So, like, I just the experience of being in a family that at, with, with my little sister, who's my sister, but is adopted, mm-hmm. I'm just intrigued to know, and it's probably good for people to know, you, you don't, you don't necessarily, like, 
fix that yearning. That's, no. that's something that's probably a beautiful, mysterious nature thing, but how, so how did it come? How did it come kind of full circle? 2013, the year of pain, Christmas yes. Eve, what, what happens? And then I'd love to sort of circle back at some point and reconnect. What, what did you see that where were prayers answered in, in a new way, but let talk about that. Talk about meeting Charlie and talk about what happened. Yeah, this is my favorite part of the story. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I love Christmas. It's my favorite holiday ever. It's my favorite season. And so I think first off, like small little thing, I think it's awesome that God made our story start at Christmas time because he just knew that that is a very special time for our family. I mean, mm-hmm. like Bobby and I met around the holidays. He proposed mm-hmm. to me around the holidays and then here we are meeting about to meet our daughter. We don't even know. Yeah. Um, and just to kind of preface for everyone, just so that there's clarity, our adoption is a kinship adoption. Yeah. Um, which means that we adopted her from within our family. Um, so uh, when we, on Christmas Eve, we were going mm-hmm. to a family um, Christmas party and we'd known that there was uh we'd known that there was a baby in the family Mm -hmm. and that there were some troubles and that Bobby's grandparents were helping care for her. Mm -hmm. Um, But we didn't know anything beyond that. No one really mentioned anything to us. And so we show up at this Christmas party, we walk in the room and everyone's all around. And uh, my, or Bobby goes this way to go talk to his grandma. And I look over across the room and I see this baby in Bobby's grandpa's arms. And I was just immediately drawn to, to her. And uh, I didn't know who his baby it was or what was going on. And I walk over and I say, hi. And like, oh, she's so cute. You know, they tell me her name. And I said, oh, can I hold her? And, you know, he says, yeah. So I hold her and I immediately am just like, oh my God, this is my baby. Like I just knew instinctively right away. I knew that she was supposed to be ours. It was a really weird feeling because <laughs> you, you just pick up a baby and you're like, I want this. Mine. This, yeah. this is mine. Bye. <laughs> That's borderline, borderline kidnapper energy. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice if they would have let me take her, took her that night, I would have, because I was just like, I know without a shout out, this is my daughter. <laughs> you know, I didn't even know what she was, Tommy. I had no idea. Like I hadn't oh, even heard man. the full story yet. I was just like, cute baby. Can I hold it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I start to ask his grandpa, you know, who, well, who is this, <laughs> you know? Right. And uh, he starts to tell me, um, you know, her parent, her parents had been using and mm-hmm. um, they had been caring for Charlie, uh, hoping that the bio parents would get clean and that just wasn't going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. And it was looking like Charlie was going to be put into the adoption, you know, foster care system. Wow. Uh, unless somebody in the family wanted to adopt her. And I'm looking over at Bobby and he's over with his grandma hearing the same story, getting an earful. And Mm -hmm. um, I'm just completely shocked because I just, you know, you have this feeling like all of a sudden I feel my spirit jump and I'm connected to this little girl. And then now now you're saying there's an opportunity to adopt her. I I was just like in a fog the rest of the night. And um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of like, how, how could you even talk about it or like process that information? You're at a Christmas party, you know? So we leave mm-hmm. and here you can share the part, like when we're in the car driving home. What? I feel like I'm taking over the conversation. You're <laughs> okay. Okay. You're, you're driving okay. good. Um, yeah. So we get in the car, we leave and we were like pretty quiet, just kind of processing everything. Mm-hmm. And um, I just look over at Bobby and I said, is it crazy that I want to pursue adopting her? And he was like, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yo. And we both just like immediately had peace about it. We, it was like no doubt in our mind. It mm-hmm. was like the most sure yeah. I'd been about anything in so long. <sighs> and uh, we were like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, we kind of get through Christmas day. Mm-hmm. And I, we shared with our parents, you know, that we mm-hmm. were thinking about it. And yeah. um, 
I think it was like a couple days after, maybe the day after Christmas, I called his uh, grandma and I said, hey, can I just come and spend some time with her? Because we want to say yes, but we really just want to spend some time. And can I just come play with her? You know, like there's just so many people. I just want some alone time. So I went over there by myself mm. and I think we hung out for like an hour or two, Charlie and I, and we just like, she was so quiet and so tiny. She was only six months old. Wow. And I was just like holding her and just staring at her and laid on the floor with her and just stared at her mm. and played with her. And I was like, yeah, she's supposed to be my daughter. Like she's mine. Mm. This, this is so right. And, uh, you know, Bobby and I went, <laughs> We went, I think it was the next day we went to go hang out with her, the two of us. Yeah. And we didn't know what to do with the baby. Nope. So we took her to the mall. We didn't know what to we were do. Just like, where do you want to go? Yeah. So we just like went to the mall and we like walked around, took her to the Disney store, like just trying to get to know her. And um, yeah. after that, we we're like, yeah, let's do this. Let's pursue adoption. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, we called all the people you're supposed to call and they're telling us, you know, this could take over a year. These kind of things take a long time. Yeah, it was like yeah. two years or something crazy, you know? Yeah, they're like, it could take up to that. We're like, okay. And um, I mean, things were happening in a matter of days, mm-hmm. weeks. Like we got guardianship of her within a few days or maybe it was like a week or two, Yeah, which it does not happen. That's not heard of. And, mm-hmm. you know, Arizona, apparently like our foster care system is just really jammed up. So things move really slow. Mm-hmm. and it was happening like overnight what it felt like, oh, like all of a yeah. sudden we were like oh we have a baby to take care of and mm-hmm. um you know thankfully we kind of did like a transition with his grandma like charlie kind of went back and forth for a while because we yeah. had full-time jobs we couldn't like watch her all the time just yet you know um yeah. and it was just happening like boom 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 and um you know like I don't think I realized how important community was in that moment. Um, Our parents, our friends, I mean, they were showing up with pack and plays and diapers and formula and like all this stuff that, you know, how expensive that stuff is, you know, we were not prepared really. Mm -hmm. We had a one bedroom apartment on the third floor, like (laughs) we're about to like have a baby. Um, And it just like, it just started happening. And I remember, um, again, we were praying and I was just like, I think this was also by myself. I was just like, you know, Lord, it would just be really cool if we could just adopt Charlie this year. I don't want to wait a couple years. Like they're saying, like, we're going to have to be in this like limbo, um, you know, only partial guardianship thing, you know, it'd be really cool if we could adopt her this year. You know, it'd be even cooler if we could adopt her in September because that'll kind of be like nine months, you know, since we met her and it would be kind of like a pregnancy. That would be kind of fun for me. And uh, I don't know, it was like a few weeks later, we get a letter in the mail and it was nine months to the day. Our court date of her formal. Shut up. Yeah, we met her December uh, 24th, 2013. Mm -hmm. And our adoption date was uh, September 24th. That's so cool. 2014. And come on. You know, it's like so many little moments like that where mm-hmm. either I was praying to myself or to myself, <laughs> praying by myself, praying with Bobby, mm-hmm. um, things that we weren't sharing with other people. And God just made it happen. He showed up. You know, when he spoke that to my heart that we were going to have a baby, we'd be surprised, but we would be ready. I mean, that's exactly how we felt when we met Mm -hmm. her on Christmas Eve. We felt so surprised. We were not expecting to walk in meeting our daughter that night, but somehow we felt so ready. Yeah. And that, again, that just carried us. And um, go ahead. No, I was to say, yeah, I think one of the craziest things for me was just the, the transition of just walking out of this season of hopeless, no energy, numb, like Mm -hmm. dull feeling into this, like it just turned on its head. Like having such um, faith and joy and courage to the point where like when we were, even though we were making our request to, to God of just like, please, can we just be done like really quick, like nine months, like um, I still had 
the same courage to inspectors or interviewers to just be like, what's the fastest you've ever seen this come back? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he was all challenging them. <laughs> like, like they probably would, they eventually may have gotten annoyed with me because like, they're like, yeah, you may not see any results for like, you know, three months, you know? And I'm like, now nah, we're going to beat that. Like <laughs> straight up, just, just straight awesome. up to, them. you're wrong. Like, awesome. <laughs> Basically. I was just like, this is it. Like we just, yeah, you know, um, yeah. And it's and so wild, you know, she fit right in. She fit right into our family. She fit right mm-hmm. into our little family unit. Um, you know, we had an adoption shower, you know, <laughs> we like, mm-hmm. she was there and it was awesome. And we got everything that we needed for that. And um, it was just crazy. You know, when I think back, uh, when I tell people this story and I think about how fast we became I just like, I like how you said that just kind of like flipped it over. Yeah. Just immediately changed our lives in a matter of a couple of months was what it was. And yeah. um, The, yeah. The culmination, like the feeling in the room, in the courtroom on that day when she just like hit the mallet down, like was just like immediate tears. Mm -hmm. That's so sick. Like it's just, uh, it's, like it's done, it's sealed, you know, like I, I felt that, you know, just like in my heart, it just Mm -hmm. felt so like. That's pretty cool. Where, where do you feel like you learned something about God in adoption that maybe people wouldn't get even through like natural childbirth? Mm -hmm. Something that I learned about God. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I think was, you know, the, the idea of just like being grafted in Hmm. to, to the lineage of, of God. Right. You know, um, like what the fatherly love that I felt towards my child that I just, like I said, when I, when that hammer hit or even before then, just the feeling of fatherly love towards her. And I don't even, I hardly know her. Yeah. I just love her. Yeah. And I, and she's amazing and she can't do anything <laughs> wrong in my eyes and I'll just give her the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, of feeling that like was something <laughs> that I kind of learned, you know, just seeing that about God of just the fatherly love that he has for me. Mm. just absolutely outweighs the feeling that I have for her. Mm. Like Mm. it's so much bigger yet. I like, I don't know. Am I saying that right? Like it was insane. Mm. Like, um, yeah. Yeah. I would kind of, I would agree with that. I think something that I learned about God was just, just how much he truly sees and empathizes and sympathizes and holds, holds, like physically holds like all of our individual prayers and hurts and worries Mm. and struggles. Like, I think I, in this whole journey, in that whole journey of becoming parents, I, I think I just realized in a much bigger way, like how much God truly does see me. And, um, you know, so much of my prayers that were answered were prayers that no one else knew about. No one else could have, you know, I couldn't have just called up the courthouse and been like, Hey, can we schedule this for September 24th? Because that would be awesome for me. (laughs) You know, only God could have made that happen. You know, everybody Mm -hmm. else was telling us that it wasn't going to happen very soon. Um, you know, the, the words that we got from God only he could do. And, you know, um, I just had, I've, I just look back at that time and I'm just reminded how just gently and lovingly God just holds every single part of me and every single Mm -hmm. thought and hurt and feeling. And, um, 
you know, from then on, I think I, I definitely experienced like, I, I learned how to continue to be free in, in, in those hurts to continue to be free and um, how I'm really feeling and where my headspace is at and what I'm struggling with and the questions that I have. And mm-hmm. God just really showed up for me in that way. So, and so- yeah. And I agree with Bobby, like there was something really powerful about that courtroom moment when they officially, you know, declared her Charlie Grace Mackey. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't know that I could love another human like that. And I thought I loved her enough you know, on the drive there to the courthouse. And when we left, I just felt like I, I, I tell people sometimes it was like a spiritual pregnancy for me, you know, and it was mm. like the, day, the day that we adopted her would have been like how you feel when your child is born. Like, you're just like, wow, I thought I loved you when you were just in, you know, mom's mm-hmm. belly, but now you're out here and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I yeah. love yeah. you more. Wow, like, that's incredible. And I, I just, I thank God for that because I want to get pregnant, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And I, mm-hmm. I just thank God that he has given me those moments. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's powerful. I think it's yeah. really beautiful. It's yeah. really, really beautiful. So, uh, talk about this for a second, just in, in parting, right? Like, cause I think it's important to say, so the pain, the disconnect, the, the loneliness, the, the grinding of that time. So real, so important. Mm -hmm. Say people are sitting at the table today and they're having a similar conversation on the other side of your guys' experience of months and then wham, and all of a sudden, right? If they're not there, they're in the grinding of it. Mm -hmm. Should they give God time? What, what, how would you advise people that are in pain, Mm -hmm. what would you say to the people in pain that haven't gotten the living, the living word called Charlie? They haven't gotten that yet. Mm -hmm. How would you advise a couple like you guys that are, that are grinding out? I thought we had a promise. I thought it was going to work. I thought you cared. I thought, how, how would you guys advise them, you know, to, to, to stay alive, right? Like how, what would you guys say to another group of people that feel like you guys feel? I would say, give your, give yourself space to have those hard days and those hard moments. Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay. I mean, I have days even now where I just wake up out of the blue. I'm just sad because I, I do want to carry a child one day and, you know, and, and that's a conversation the Lord and I have often. Yeah. Um, and like I said before, you know, I, most of the time I'm fine. Most of the time I don't think about it. Most of the time I'm totally at peace with that part of my life. But then sometimes I just wake up and I'm really sad about it. Wow. And there's been times when I'd even just have to say, you know what, I'm going to call off of work for today mm. and just be home and just be sad and I'll cry. And, you know, I'll just kind of, sometimes I just wake up and I'll just tell them like, oh, I feel it today you know, mm-hmm. yeah. just give yourself space to, to walk through it because I think it's harder to get out of that pit when you just suppress it, when you wake up and say, I feel sad, but I'm going to ignore it, mm-hmm. you know, for the sake of, you know, keeping up appearances and moving on with your life. I think mm-hmm. it helps more. Um, don't feel like you have to spread, you know, your hurt to like everyone in your community. You know, it, I think it's helpful that only a couple of our closest friends, you know, really know that those true feelings and hurts that we have. And mm-hmm. I know that I can text, you know, my friend, Melissa and Megan, you know, Hey, I'm hurting today. Yeah. I'm, I'm hurting. And I don't really, we don't need to talk about it, but can yeah. you just pray for me? Because wow. um, my heart hurts about it today. <laughs> and that's yeah. all it is. You know, it's as simple as that for me, at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like, um, if I was going to kind of try and uh, give myself some advice back in those, those hard times um, was uh, one, it was a lot of self evaluation and I needed to recognize that I was probably filling in a lot of blanks for on my, you know what I mean? I was setting these expectations of myself and they weren't expectations that God was putting on me. 
Yeah. They they were uh, demands I was making of myself, um, and because it seemed right, and it wasn't like it was too much. It wasn't even the right way. Like I was just trying to work, and um, I just needed to realize how to kind of be, if you will, like mm. instead of trying to make it happen. Yeah. Um, um, it's okay to hang out in the pain a little bit. Yeah. You know? Like it's okay to be like, yeah, I'm hurting. Right. What, yeah. What, when uh, when one of you guys is hurting but the other isn't, what does that sound like for you guys? Mm. You know, when you're like in, you're yeah. just in two different places. How do you how do you hang out so you don't you don't disconnect further, right? Like, how do you guys do the hard days? Yeah. Just because it's a hard day and there's not, no one's wrong or right. It's just, that's just what it is. How do you guys tend to do that? I think it takes a lot of honesty and communication. Mm -hmm. Like only we, only we know what we need. And if you don't know what you need, take time to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. I know that when I'm hurting, I just need to be alone. I just mm -hmm. need quiet. I just need quiet. Yeah. I think uh, we just kind of lean in real close to each other. Like I think, um, maybe even back then, which is probably how we ended up in that moment at the end, mm -hmm. is, is instead of leaning in to each other, we really leaned away because we didn't we didn't want to bear our hurts. We didn't want to burden other. each other. We didn't want to burden each other with our pain because we knew that the other person was going through something. And and so now in in these seasons, like we really kind of have learned to lean, lean in close to each other. Mm -hmm uh not make each other feel like they're wrong wow. um or that it's bad to feel those things um mm. or try to fix each other um but just be there in that you know and that's cool um tell each other that you know that we love each other mm. and mm. That, that god is in love with us and our family and wow um yeah i think i think that that was our biggest miss is, is that we didn't ever feel like we could trust each other with our hurt there you go so that's really good so if you're if you're hearing this and you you like either bobby or like ashley or like bobby and ashley you're getting consumed with the failure of a season or something isn't going the way that you wanted it to, or your dreams aren't coming to pass, the shame and the pressure might cause you to disconnect or pull away. But there's a safety in, in leaning into God and leaning into your people and being honest about what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think about Jesus saying, you know, there's nothing secret that's not going to be revealed. You know, what gets whispered in the ear, talk about it. And I think, I think that's something that we're trying as a community to do is yeah. to try to learn how to process the shame, the pain, the guilt, the hurt, so that we don't carry it secretly and it, it kind of kills us, you know? So I, I love the way that you said that, Bobby and, and Ashley, just that in the shame of it, you, you found yourself sitting on the same, uh, at the same table, pulled apart, mm -hmm. blaming yourselves, and you had an ally at the table that didn't realize how much you got. So I just think for people, it's, it's just good to know, like there's a lot of people that are be, going to be coming into their second, third, fourth, fifth, first year of marriage and family is going to become important and they're going to have their own journey. Mm -hmm. And so it's just important to know. It's like when the stuff isn't working and when it just feels like, huh, like be, be patient, be kind with one another, be open about what's going on. Um, that's really deep water. And, and I would say too, I guess my hope and prayer is for every person, every couple that struggled with the same exact issue, mm -hmm. that they would get their, they would have their victory and their Charlie moment. And that yeah. God would be able to, like it says, like that God would be able to put the lonely in families and that that would really be a real thing. Mm -hmm. Cause you guys are like an answered prayer to Charlie too. And she's an answered prayer to you. That's, oh, yeah. that's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. thing. So how old is she now? She's seven. Seven, dude. Her and Piper Green are bros for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, well, how do people find you if they want? If they, How about this? First off, sorry. <laughs> if people hear this, Rev people, mm -hmm. community people, and their heart is in your direction, what can they be believing for for you guys in this coming year? 
Wow, okay. Um, keep asking all these big questions. Right. Um, <laughs> That's what we do, dude. Welcome to Rev. We bring up each other's issues. That's it. We just we just bring up the yeah. issues. No, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think just prayer that we just continue to move forward in mm -hmm. the dreams that God's put in our hearts and mm -hmm. uh, just continue to walk in authenticity and, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially like, you know, we are, we're in COVID times right now. Right. So, yeah, right. you know, school looks a lot different. Our family dynamic looks a lot different. Work mm -hmm. looks different. And, yeah, you know, just, we just had a meeting today about school stuff and I'm just like, okay, this is more than I thought it was going to be. It's very overwhelming. Yeah. And so just prayer that, you know, we just continue to have God guide our steps in every decision, you know, wow. uh, even more so. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? Um, no, yeah. I think, uh, as far as like on topic, you know, for us, it's, it's still a long journey ahead with, with Charlie, mm -hmm. you know? And so we've, we've overcome a lot and, uh, we've learned a lot on our journey, but it's just prayer to continue to do the right thing by her you know um so i think prayer for charlie too yes. uh just as yeah. like a sidebar like the last couple months she's mm. been asking a lot of questions about you know she wants a baby brother more than anything she wants a sibling mm -hmm. and so just prayer for her little heart that she has understanding and peace and that we know how to talk to her about these things because sometimes yeah. i mean you know tommy your kids bring up things like in the most random moments you're like really you want to talk about this right now and it's like, you don't even know what to say. Yeah. Um, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. you know, she's been asking a lot of questions. So having to navigate that is, is tricky. And so it just, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. I'm going to say prayer words for you right now. And then um, uh, you can tell everybody how they can find you if you want them to find you in just okay. a second. So <laughs> father, um, I just pray for Bobby and Ashley right now and God and, uh, I'm lifting up their relationship and their connection, their individual journeys and their, their covenant journey together. Um, and I pray God, you give them fulfillment in the dreams of their heart. Mm -hmm. I pray for the worship. I pray for the expression, pray for the heart to serve the heart to create community. And above all the, the desire to live in an authentic way. And so Jesus, I pray that you teach them to be their authentic selves and, uh, I just thank you that you've given them permission to, to, to try freedom in ways that they, they wouldn't have given themselves the ability to in other seasons. So God, I pray that, um, what's it say, man, that they wouldn't use their freedom to miss it, but God, uh, that they would actually, their freedom would become one of the most powerful things to teach them and lead them, uh, deeper into your heart. Thank you that they're free to make decisions. Thank you that they're free to make mistakes. Thank you that they're free to make choices. Thank you that they're free to change their mind. Thank you, God, for the freedom that you've put over their lives and that that's given birth to a breakthrough. And so I just pray for them as a family with little Charlie. Pray for Charlie's heart, her understanding and her unique journey as a, a, a kid that has a mom and a dad and a kid that is that was adopted. And that unique, honest story and and just true peace. I pray for her, um, like her birth mom and all of the stuff that's connected with her, like blood family. I pray that there'd be such beautiful redemption and peace for them. We just bless them and just, just bless Charlie. And I just pray for this family, God, for her future, for her, you know, seven to 12 years old and 12 to 15 and 16 to the end of high school and just her destiny and her relationships and her friendships and, uh, the way that she learns how to love and the way that she learns how to live. And so God, we just, we just lift up all the, all, all of the little Charlies that, that need moms and dads. And um, I do pray God, I'm actually just going to pray. Why not? I pray that you'd bring a little boy to Bobby and Ashley and that there'd be a little brother that would become a part of their future. And it would be a unique God story as well. And it would be beautiful and it would be redemptive and that it would be honest and it would be real. And so I just thank you for these guys, Lord. Thank you for the wounds that have, have marked their life. Thank you for the wisdom that they carry. Thank you for their love for one another and for you, for us. And so um, I just pray you bless their life and bless their year. Uh, crown it, crown their year, God, with good things. Um, in Jesus' name. 
Mm. All right. Well, how do people find you? If you, if you don't want people to find you, I get it. But if you want people <laughs> to follow you in life on either Twitch or on social media, how can people reach out to you? If they have questions, if what you've said has really struck something for them and you, and they want to connect with you, is that okay? How could they reach oh, out yeah. to you? Yeah. So you can find me on the Instagrams. Dang, um, on the grams. Little Miss Ashley, and it's mm-hmm. spelled A S H L E I G H. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. On Instagram. She's got a killer feed. Yes, love Way it. Better than mine. <laughs> yes. No, Bobby's Instagram is awesome. One swipe, and you just get to see his whole. Yeah, you get to life. see the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, you get to see all of it. But yeah, Bobby, how do how do people find you on Twitch, man? Tell me about your. Uh, stream. Yeah, so <laughs> it's uh, Twitch TV slash Bangerang Bobby. Bangerang Bobby. Yeah, um, <laughs> we stream on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Um, Love it. And uh, it's a cool community. It's a cool, yeah, it's a fun little community. We're, we're growing and having a good time. And um, otherwise, uh, that's probably my best one, honestly. Yeah, it's sick. I love people to be able to share in that. So Bobby and Ashley and Charlie Mackey. I love you guys. Thank you very much for taking just a bit over an hour with me. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for sharing your story and um, for being a part of our community and going on this journey together. So I love you guys a lot. I will. Um, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, sorry. Let me, uh, if you're, if you need anything, you can hit <laughs> us up at the rev, at the rev gatherings at gmail.com. And you can check out our church stuff at the rev gatherings.com. We'll see you guys next time. Hey, you guys, Tommy Green here. Just want to say thank you again for listening to this episode of the Rev Talks podcast. Our hope with each and every episode is that it would encourage you, maybe give you a reason to have a laugh, expand your capacity on the inside to love and empathy, appreciation, hopefully make your world just a little bit bigger and uh, give you faith, hope for the future. If you like what you heard, again, please share, subscribe, give us a good rating, give us some good feedback. Over all of this, thank you so much for taking us with you uh, in a small part of your day, on the drive, on on the run, you know, just as you're going about your day. Thank you so much for sharing uh, some time of your life with us on this podcast. Um, To connect with us, you can email us again at therevgatherings.com and we will see you on the next episode. Love you guys. Bye.